they now tell you that. Oh, I think I set that up, right? I set that up so you know that it's going to be recorded. Okay, well, welcome to Biology 422 Plant Systematics. I think it's going to be a great semester. We spent a really long time this summer, especially April and I, getting the class ready, so it should run smoothly. We intend this class to run smoothly, whether we are open, the university is open, or whether it closed. We have a pretty clear plan on how we transition, and the transition for you should be seamless, should be just pretty seamless. So we've worked, as I say, very hard to make that happen, and I hope we're going to succeed in that. Now, we haven't started out on the best foot here because of Canvas problems, and you haven't seen all of them that we've been dealing with this morning. I just don't know what to think about Canvas. I'm liking it less and less as we have to use it in more and more technical ways. But there we are. We've got, we're stuck with it. So we'll make the best of it. So it is a online class, mostly, like 95% online. We will have one, you will be in lab one hour a week. And in just a minute or two, I'm gonna send you a link where you can sign up for that hour. Now, when you sign up for the hour that you're going to be in lab, you need to sign up for your lab section. That is, if you signed up for my lab section, which would be the first <clears throat> 11 to 2, essentially, you need to pick an hour in that slot 11 to 2. If you signed up for Ms. Rustforce's lab session, which would have been 2 to 5, you need to sign up for one slot in 2 to 5. So you're going to put your name in one place on this form I'm going to upload here or send you in, just in the chat in just a minute. That's the time you're going to set up in lab, spend in lab. So we have reduced the capacity of the lab to one third of its normal capacity. So you're not even at half now in the lab. So it'll be one third plus Miss Rushforth will be there and April will be there sometimes, but mostly she'll be out of the lab. She won't be just be coming in to help with some little things. She does most of her work before and after the lab. So because it's only one hour in the lab, you're going to have to be very efficient with how you use that hour. We've reduced the kind of things that you do hands-on in the lab to the absolute minimum, which means we've pushed all of the other work which you can do at home to home. So for instance, after we finish here today with this introduction to the course, there will be an assignment that asks you to watch two videos, relatively short videos. They are going to explain how to use the microscopes in the lab and I'm asking you to do a little outline and hand in the outline so that we know that you've understood the sequence of steps that you're going to use to take photographs. When I say microscopes, I mean specifically the photo microscopes. So each week in lab, you're going to be taking a photograph through a really very good quality, almost research quality um, photographic microscope. You're going to be putting a measurement scale on those. And to prepare for that, you're also going to be doing a measurement. In addition to that, we'll have lab stations set up where you can go around and look at the organisms that you've been working with for that week's lab. And that's all you're doing in the lab. So you're not, um, I hope I've got that right. Miss Rushforth, did I tell that, did I tell them that those things right? I. Yes, that is correct. Um, they will not be working on lab data sheets in lab, which is probably what most of them are used to. They'll be doing that before they arrive. Okay, so that, um, so there is a lab data sheet that is in your lab manual. And I can show you that now. I think if I share my screen and find it, let me find it first. I know what I'm going to do. I'm going to share my screen. Find the right screen to share. There, that's it. Okay, and I'm going to go over here to so here's the class. I'm going to look under files. So I wanted to make sure you know the files area is here. And there's a lot of information you can find here. Now, as we do assignments, you'll have links to these. 
but if you ever can't find something, you can go here under the lecture PowerPoints file directory in the files area, for instance. And you can see all the lecture PowerPoints for the whole semester. And you can grab those. Okay, so I was going to look for the lab manual. Always the problem, where did I put the lab manual? Most these are things that I can see that you can't see. It's not there. I may not have uploaded it. Let us fix that. Someone in the chat says it's in textbooks. In textbooks, that's where it should be. There. <laughs> we should look at the textbooks too. Thank you, Erica. No problem. There it is. I'm so organized, I can't keep up with my own organization. Okay, so here's the lab manual. It's for the whole semester. There are some instructions on using the microscope, which will supplement the videos you watch. It's just slow getting there. There's about measurements, which is also the first lab. So you should look over those pages for the first lab, but what I'm trying to get to, there's instructions for the photography. Okay, so here we have lab for next week. Here are some questions. So there'll be a set of these questions, multiple choice questions for every week in lab. So you will work on these questions at home while you're watching the lectures, or you can help use the internet to help you look, up, look things up. You can use your textbook, which we'll talk about in a minute to look these things up. And you'll answer these questions by circling the answers. And then you will hand these in to Ms. Rushforth when you come into the lab. So Ms. Rushforth is handling all of the laboratories. Even though they said it's my laboratory and her laboratory, she will be there during the lab, your laboratory period. And the reason for that is because I'm in, a, I'm in a risk group. And so back in April, May last year, I declared myself in a risk group and I <clears throat> am teaching all online this semester. So I will not be present in the labs. So you'll hand those into Ms. Rushforth at the beginning of the lab. And then she will give you another sheet, a two-page sheet, which you will fill out in the labs. And um, Ms. Rushforth's gonna explain how we're grading those since she remembers that better than I do. And you'll hand those in by the end of the lab. So you'll hand that second sheet in at the end of the lab, at the end of your one hour. If you have done this first sheet, the second sheet's gonna be very easy. So, Heather, grading? Yeah, so the data sheets, when you come in and drop them off with me, I'm just gonna be looking at them for completion. I am not going to be grading, grading them. So it's just that you've done the work when you came to lab. The um, photograph, will be graded. Um, I believe that's out of 10 points. And uh, the group sheet, or um, what we used to call group sheets, you will have individuals, just usually two, maybe three page sheets. Um, that's just a summary of all the lab material. And you will turn that in before you leave. And that the points vary on that between five and 10 points, I believe. So um, low points, um, but there's a lot of work that needs to be done before you come to class so that we make sure you use your time efficiently. I think that's a lot of work to do to get ready for those. If you do not do these sheets, which are on your screen right now, beforehand, before you get to lab, you are not going to be able to do the work in lab in one hour. And that's going to be very obvious to Mrs. Rushforth. So you just won't be able to, to complete the work. 
in an hour and you can't stay on after the hour because we'll start, we have capacity issues in the room. Okay, so a lot of your work is gonna be done at home. So that's the basics of how the labs are gonna work. The lectures are going to be online and um, I have shown you the PowerPoints for that already. You see, a, here we go. So the PowerPoints are in the files area. If we go to... Bruce, hold on. We have a question in the chat that I can answer. Good. Um, Chase asked if it's a physical copy, um, handwritten or printed for the, I believe, Chase, you're asking about those data sheets. Uh, they can be printed out and then you can handwrite them. Or if you can um, change a PDF, you're welcome to, as long as they are completed when you turn them in. But they're going to hand them in as a hard copy to you. Then. Yes, hand it in as a hard copy when you walk into the lab. Yep. Um, this Thursday, no, you do not have any work to do ahead of lab on Thursday, except to watch those videos, I believe, unless you added something, Bruce. Oh, there's work for the lecture, but there is no extra work for the lab. Right. Just you're going to watch videos before you come to the lab so that you're prepared to use the microscope and the photography um, software. So it's very important you watch those videos before you come to the so lab. So I'm asking you to watch the videos, and then you're going to write a little outline of how you take a photograph ah. for me. Okay. That's, That's what I was The canvas, and we'll... I intended to have that assignment posted right now, but that was one of the other ways we were fighting Canvas. It wasn't working for us this morning. So as soon as this introductory meeting here ends, we will get that up on Canvas. So all of the lectures are on YouTube. Um, they're not all there for the semester yet, but within a week or so, they're all going to be on YouTube. And they will be assigned week by week to go through them. They, one way to keep track of those is to subscribe to this YouTube channel. And then you can always jump to see the lectures. If you lose them in Canvas or you can't find something, you can always go here and watch the lectures. Now I'm going to send you the link to that as soon as I find my link here. Sharing my room. It's not letting me, there's the chat, okay. I, I can try and grab it, Bruce. You may not be able to while you're sharing. Okay, so there's the link. Oops, that's only to one person. I see, um, Quinn, when you ask, or to everyone is, when you ask a question, ask it to everyone or to Miss Rushmore, so she sees it because I don't have the chat open. Um, okay, so there's the YouTube channel to everyone. So click on that and subscribe with your UNCGA mail address and then you can always find the videos. So it's our backup. Quinn asked if we're not gonna have Zoom meetings and um, I'll come back to that in a minute, but very, we're gonna have, relatively little time is going to be spent on Zoom. There will be some meetings, I'll come back to it in a minute. Okay, so most of the class is asynchronous. So each week for the lecture, you're going to be asked to watch some one or two videos, to take notes on those videos. You've seen the first assignments on those already and to turn those in. And we are going to try to have a regular rhythm to that so that you'll always know which day the assignment comes and which day it's due, and it'll be the same every, same every week. So you can plan your week ahead. The assignments were up on, those first two assignments for the next week's work were up on <clears throat> Canvas for so long because we have two students who have conflicts this week. And they needed to have the option to do the work early and so we got the first assignments up very early so they could do the work. And you should be starting them now or relatively soon so that you can finish them by the time that the lecture, that they're due. So in general, you're finishing the lectures by the time you come into lab at 11 o'clock 
on thir every Thursday. So there's a couple things you've got to have done by Thursday at 11. One was the preparation for that lab and two was the lecture material. And those things go hand in hand because as you're watching the lectures, you're taking notes on those lectures and you're filling out the forms that are ready for the lab. In terms of Zoom meetings, what's going to be done on Zoom? So basically on Tuesday, there are no Zoom meetings. This is our only Tuesday Zoom meeting. That our intention is to do that. If something changes, we'll change. On Thursdays, beginning September 3rd, we will have regular Zoom meetings every week, but it is very unlikely they will run the full period. What will happen on those meetings is that the student presentations will happen on Thursdays. So beginning on the third, the first group of students will present and those will run every Thursday until the end of the semester. And in fact, we have to work out something for the last group to present because they would normally present at the, after the semester ends, but we'll talk to that group once we know who it is and once we get into the semester. Those presentations should not run more than a half an hour. The rest of the time can be used for questions or discussion if you have any. So the first part of the Zoom meeting on Thursdays is required and we're taking attendance. And the second part is not required. If you need to go or you need to want to work the time to work on lectures or another class, you can do that. <clears throat> but I'll stay around as long as someone has questions or Ms. Rushworth will stay around as long as someone has questions. So we have relatively little time on Zoom and most of the time is done asynchronously. Now that leaves us with the problem of that you don't have good connection with your other students in the class. You'll see some of those students in lab, but not very many. And of course, you're all wearing masks in the lab and you're keeping distance from the other students. You've seen that UNC Chapel Hill closed yesterday for all face-to-face -face classes because of student behavior, not in the classroom, but student behavior outside of classes. So please take this seriously. I know you all are probably living off campus. You're not living in the dorms. I think you're all in relatively low risk groups for the behavior that's causing the transmission of COVID-19. I just needed to emphasize how important it is that you wear those masks when you're around anybody and you keep your distance. And we will be enforcing that in the lectures. And I mean, in the, in the laboratory periods, if you don't have a mask on, we will ask you to leave. If people refuse to leave, we will have to ask everyone else to leave and lock the lab. I don't expect we're gonna have anyone behaving like that, but that's, what will happen if we really have someone who just refuses to wear a mask and refuses to leave when we ask them. Okay. Let me pause for a minute and ask if there are general questions about the general organization of the course. Okay, in terms of assignments, you just keep your eye on the assignments area. All the assignments will be posted there with due dates. As I say, we'll start to get a rhythm going so that you'll kind of have an expectation for what they're doing. Um, before I go on and talk about the software, let me get those lab, that lab form for you. And I've got to get my I'll send you the link to that. I'll let you see it here. Okay, so here is the Google Doc. And here's one of the students who <clears throat> had a issue that she couldn't be here this week. The other one did not sign up. Maybe he dropped the course. Okay, let me post this in the chat. I didn't get the chat there. Now it's in the chat and I am going to get it out of there. Okay, so click on that link and put your name in one time slot. We'll give you a few minutes to do that.
Okay, so here's our four programs. Now, for PC users, it's all simple. All the programs are in the software area in, in Canvas, and you can download them from there, or there's links on the, there'll be links when we give an assignment to download and install the programs. They're all in zip archives. You take the program out of the zip archive, and it looks like this here, and it looks like this. If you have not experienced with zip archives before or zip files, the problem is that when you open a zip file, it also looks exactly like this. So how do you know if you're in a zip file or you're not in a zip file when you look at a program like this? When you start the program, if you're in the zip archive, it's not gonna let you create a username. That's the typical um, problem. So you can't write the username file into the zip archive while the program's running. So if you get that error, you're in, the, you're in the zip archive and you need to extract the program. If you don't know how to get a program out of a zip archive, you can Google how to do that. It's very simple. I mean, basically all you really need to do is you take and you open the zip archive and you drag the directory out of it and it'll copy it out of it. There are other ways to do it to. Okay, so that's the PC side. It's very simple. On the Mac side, and <clears throat> if you have a Mac, would you send a message to Miss Russforth just saying, I have a Mac so she can write down your name? Because <clears throat> we're going to have to do something special with you or two of the programs. Let me tell you the two programs that we are going to work just like for the PC people, and that is Image Quiz Life Cycles and Image Quiz Plant Diversity. And those two, plant, those two ones are in the Canvas area under the software tab, file software tab. And so, oh man, we got a lot of Macs. <laughs> oh, that's not good. Um, so you go to that area for those two programs. They are in a DMG file. If you don't know what a DMG file is, again, you can Google that. It is a virtual disk drive so that when you open those files, you download them, you open them on your Mac, it's gonna look like someone just installed a new disk drive on your computer, like they just plugged in a disk drive into one of the USB slots, if you have USB slots. You have to take the programs out of that virtual disk drive. They will not run from within the virtual disk drive. Mac will not let me, or Apple will not let me distribute a program in a virtual disk drive that will run from within that drive. It won't let me do a, create a write virtual disk drive. And it's a security thing on the Macs. Macs got all these security layers. This is one of them. So you have to take them out of that. If again, if you get an error where you cannot create a username, it means your file, <clears throat> your program is still within the virtual disk drive. Now you have to take the whole directory out. You cannot just take the app, the app out. <clears throat> I know on the Macs you're used to just taking the app file and dragging that to the desktop. You cannot do that here. And that's because we created this program so that we could create all these different versions. You see four different versions here. The app, the app file is identical in them. The images are different. It lets me easily create different versions of the program so you can learn better. But that will be the second major thing that Mac users will do. They will try to drag the app out of the directory and put that on their desktop and then it's gonna bomb. It's not gonna, it's really not gonna run at all well. I don't remember the error you get, but there's a clear error that comes up. Okay, so the whole directory has to come out, has to come out on the desktop. <clears throat> Once it's on the desktop, you have to give your Mac permission to run it. So it's gonna say it's downloaded from the internet and you have to go in your security sessions and allow it to open it. Once you've done that once, it should work fine. You have to do something similar on the PC, but it's not as involved on the PC. Okay, that's all the easy stuff on the Mac. The hard thing involves these two programs, IQ Algae and IQ Fungi. For reasons I can't go into in detail because it would take us 10 minutes to explain, we cannot let you in download those from 
Canvas or the internet or any website, they will not run if you download from the website. I mean, they just flat out won't run. There's nothing wrong with the programs. Apple just won't let us distribute them that way. And again, I, if you're ever interested, I can explain it to you, but I just want to do it for everybody. So we are going to give them to you on a USB drive, a small USB drive on um, the first lab. So that's why Ms. Rushforth is running your name down. We've got a bunch of USB drives and you're gonna copy them from the USB drive onto your hard drive and then they will run fine. So you should bring your computer, if you're a Mac user, bring your computer to the lab the first week so you can do this. I don't think we have enough USB drives to give everyone for the semester, but we have certainly enough to let you copy them out of that. So Mac users, US, uh, Mac computers to the lab the first time, get the USB drive from Ms. Rushford, copy the two files, IQ algae, IQ fungi to your hard drive, to your desktop is a nice place to put them and they will run fine. This is, this is assuming you're bringing, you have a Mac laptop. If you have a Mac desktop, then I can loan you the yeah. USB for a week. We're assuming that we don't have hundreds of people having a Mac desktop, or not hundreds, but you know. No, but I, I assume somebody, I, that's what I have at home, so. Sorry? That's what I have at home, so I just wanted to emphasize that to everybody. But if you have your Mac laptop, bring it to lab. There are, if anyone has a, um, oh, what's the Google, the Google computer is a? Chromebook. Chromebook. Does anyone have a Chromebook? Uh oh, I had a flash in the, is there someone with a Chromebook there in the? Yes, yes, Giovanna has a Chromebook. None of these are gonna run on the Chromebook. So <clears throat> you're gonna to have to find a Mac or a PC to run these on. You can run them off of any computer off of a USB drive. We will give you a USB drive for the semester since there's only one person, I'll make one for you with all the programs on it. I will put the Mac programs and the PC programs on it. I think I've got enough room on these drives to do that. But you're gonna to have to find a computer to run them off. I apologize when this program was um, developed. I, I developed this myself with, I didn't write the program. I designed them. I did research to show that they're effective in helping students learn. <clears throat> and we published that in a peer review paper. And when this was all done, Chromebooks didn't exist. And we just couldn't go back and reprogram the whole thing to run on a Chromebook. And they did some pretty weird stuff with Chromebooks anyway that other things don't run on. So I apologize that it doesn't do there. So you need to find a Mac or a PC, either on campus or off campus, that you can plug a USB drive in and run the things off. The programs will all run from a USB drive. If you follow the same steps that I've just told you, make sure that they're not in the DMG and so on. I'll take, and yeah, I can take them out for you. I can get them out, put them in the, on the USB drive. So that'll be there for you on Thursday. Any questions about the software? Um, before we go, is there, and now one person has said they had Chromebook, is anybody else going to need that situation? I just want to make sure we have enough. Okay. All right. We're good. Just have one then. Okay. I want to look at the syllabus to see if there's anything I've forgotten. Can you see the syllabus? So yes. <clears throat> it's tennis, yes. but we hope we're going to be able to stick to this. Our intention is to be able to stick to this. Since all the lectures are pre-recorded, we're pretty sure we can. It's organized by week here, not by day, because you're doing it asynchronously. There are four quizzes. <clears throat> There's a little bit of the quiz that'll be given in the laboratory period. We will cut back some of the other assignments that week when we give a quiz, so you can do that. And then the majority of the quiz will be online. The midterm uh, will probably be done in exactly the same way, except you'll have the whole hour in the lab to do the midterm. The readings are in the textbook area on Canvas. There's only one book that we've asked you to re buy. 
You may, if you'd like, buy this copy of Raven 7th edition as a used textbook. I got fed up with our bookstore charging exorbitant amounts of money for books. I, and so I'm using, we're using an old textbook, an old edition, not the newest edition. And we're giving you everything <coughs> except one thing on PDFs. So if you don't want to buy anything, you won't, well, you can, if you don't only want to buy one thing, you can buy one thing <coughs> and use everything on the PDF. If you want a copy of this book, you can get it. You can buy other editions. You just have to find comparable pages in the other edition and then read those pages. The required books, uh, the required books are um, apparently on Canvas. You can look there to get the list of them. I, just to tell you how ridiculous it got and what pushed me over to giving everything on PDFs um, was that there's a little book called Root Words and Combining Forms that used to be $15. And I didn't have a really bad, hard problem of buying of asking students to buy this old textbook, which is very useful. It tells you about how, root, how these words that we're gonna be learning this semester are constructed for $15. That book, if you bought it through the bookstore today, would be $60. And I just couldn't, I couldn't do it. I knew it was available as a PDF. I just given it to you. Okay, this is about COVID-19. You'll see this same text on every syllabus that you get this semester. Please take it seriously. Um, we covered a little bit of it before. There is a video, the Spartan Shield video, they would like you to watch before this. It is a video that I think is aimed more at freshmen. If you look <clears throat> in the um, email I sent out early, on, I sent you a link in Canvas Studio to a much more detailed visual, a scientific presentation of some of the evidence for why wearing a mask works. I'd encourage you to watch that if you want to know that there is science behind this, that you don't have to believe just everything that you hear on social media or through the newspaper or so on, that there actually are scientists out there who have done technical presentations on it. And I made one of them available to you. It is unfortunately not available on the internet for reasons I do not understand, but um, you can find that. If you can't find it in the emails I've sent before because you weren't enrolled in the class, et cetera, go into Canvas and you will see on the left side a, a place that says Studio. It is in there and you can watch it there. There's no assignment associated with it. I just encourage you to, to watch it. So um, you can read the thing about health and well-being in the Student Health Center and the, <clears throat> and the Counseling Center. I encourage you to use all of those resources if you feel you need them. And I think that many people need them these days. I know that there's been a lot of stress. We're gonna do our best to reduce it for this course. But if you find yourself in situations where you are stressed, please go there. We are not in lab very much where we can see this. In the past, and one of my main things about worried about moving online is that we don't have much experience with you. So I have had in the last two semesters, students in my lab who stopped talking. They just would not, they, they talked a little bit and then they stopped, completely stopped talking. That's a red flag. And you know that something is wrong and you need to talk to that students. I've had students in my lab standing next to their lab desk with tears streaming down their face. No sobbing, no outward sign, except tears were streaming down their face. We had known something was wrong with this student up until then, but they refused to say anything. They refused to talk about it. When we're meeting face to face, we have clues that something's going on with you and we need to get you some help. We do not have those kinds of clues online. I'm just asking you to please take care of yourselves. Let us know if you need some special accommodation. Let us know if something's going on and we can do anything. Please use the resources on campus. We all care about you. We care about your health. We care about your mental health. But we're just in situations now where we're not going to be seeing you very much and we're not going to see the behavioral changes that might alert us that you need help. So please monitor yourself. 
Now, there is one thing we can do. I say, let us know. Here is something that makes it a little easier. For this class, we are giving you what I call mental health opt-outs. So you are one of those students who is standing next to her desk. And if, even if the tears are not streaming yet, you feel like they're going to start any minute and you've got an assignment due. You write me or you might miss Rushforth and you say, I need to opt out of this assignment. That's all you need to say. This is a mental health opt out. And you got it. You don't have to explain what you did, what's going on. You don't have to explain anything. You say, I need an opt out for this assignment. You can opt out of any assignment in the semester. You can opt out of the midterm if this happens at the midterm. The only requirement, you can't opt out of both the midterm and the final. Now, when you opt out, it doesn't hurt your grade. We just don't count that. We calculate your grade based on everything else you've done and take that assignment out. You can do three of those this semester. You get three of those with no questions asked. By the time you get the third one, though, we start to know it's like, the, it's like the behavioral clue. And we say, there's something going on with this person. And we'll probably talk to you and say, are you getting the help you need? <clears throat> here's, what, here's the kinds of things we have on campus that can help um, you know, let us know what we can do more than just giving you these opt-outs. So by, by the third one, you may hear from us. The first two, you know, these are free. Get out of this assignment. No, no cost. I mean, okay, you just have to do it before the assignment is due. It can be very close to when the assignment is due, but you can't say, oh, okay, I missed that. I mean, I would, we really don't want you to say, okay, I missed that assignment. And so can I get out of it retrospectively? Know yourself well enough to say, I'm just not gonna be able to do this. Let me out of this. Things too much going on right now. Okay, read, the, read this text to make sure you understand that. Let me know if you have any questions about it. Ms. Rushforth, are there questions in the chat that we need to answer or? Um, no, I was just answering everybody. Somebody asked about the, the Rushforth, the Samuel Rushforth text for the book for lab. And I just said, I highly recommend you use it as a resource for lab, but there's not assigned readings out of it. No, and so how you'll use that is, <clears throat> especially in the latter part of the course, but in the beginning too, you'll see, <clears throat> And that book's a book of photographs with la labeled photographs. So you're gonna have to label your photographs that you take in lab. And so <clears throat> the book is gonna help you do that. You can find these organisms on the internet, but you're not gonna find label pictures of them on the internet, or it's not gonna be easy to find them. This book has got all the organisms we're doing in the semester, and you can look up in there and you can then look at the correct labels on the organisms and use that to label your photographs. So bring it to lab. And also then you can use it to study also when you want to review. So that's the only one. You don't need to have the newest edition. I think the newest edition is seventh or eighth. You can go back to five, get, get a cheap one. The information has not changed. There are minor corrections in the different editions. It's nothing major that you need to do. A, textbooks work by, they, they do something called flushing the market. They want you to buy the newest tech book because they make money on that. They don't make money when you buy a used one. So they introduce a new edition with some minor changes in it. And all the professors say, buy the newest edition and then you pay more money for it and they make money. We're not doing that. We're letting you buy the old edition. Everything else is on uh, Canvas. Our office hours are both online and by appointment. Um, <clears throat> you can send us an email or you can make a Appointment through Starfish. We'll get that set up here. Before you move forward, uh, don't you also want them to uh, purchase the root word book? No, that's now as available as a PDF. Oh, okay. I'm sorry. Canvas. I, <clears throat> I, I had found it a couple years ago on, <clears throat> on the internet. And when the price went up for a, this is an old book. It was printed like in the 60s. It's so old, it doesn't have an ISBN. And selling that book for $60 was unconscionable. When they started doing that, I said, okay, I'm giving it away. So it's on, it's a great book. You'll use it as a reference book. Uh, I've had students say it was the best thing that they learned in their undergraduate career is to use that book. All the words that you haven't made sense to you because you didn't know a little bit of Greek and Latin roots will now make sense. So if you're going on and hoping for a career in some medical field, 
you can make all those words now make sense to you. Um, they're all descriptive terms, and that's the book that lets you do it. Um, attendance, we kind of did that. Synchronous lectures are mandatory. That's mostly your presentations. Laboratories are mandatory. Um, yeah, if you're gonna miss a class, you have to let us know beforehand. We really want you to be there for the, for the student presentations. It's just not good form to miss those. Um, I'll let you read most of the rest of it. Remember the academic honor policy. It, there's a great temptation to cheat on questions online. We'll talk more about that as we get to the first quiz and things. Just, you know, you're all mature adults about to graduate. Don't jeopardize it. Don't take a chance. It's likely we're going to find out. And no one wants to go through that, least of all us. So please, it's, it's simple. Life is simple. Do the work, learn the material. That's kind of it. Take, take the test yourself. It doesn't take a lot of thought. It takes a lot more work to cheat. Don't do it. Here's the, the grading assignment. Um, this will, these percentages will be entered into Canvas. So you can see your status at any one time. Of course, you have to remember when the final and the midterm haven't been given, it's not going to count those into your grade. So the first things you're going to see is you're going to be getting grades from your lab assignments and assignments that you've done at home, and you're all going to be getting a hundreds on those. And so you're all going to have A's for the first week or two of classes. Um, just realize that those grades are going to change when you start getting quizzes and things. Don't don't take them as a excuse to get lazy. I think we covered everything else. Miss Rushforth, I'm going to turn it over to you basically for the last couple of minutes. Is there anything we've forgotten? I'm sure we'll think of something after this. Uh, <laughs> but no, I don't I think you've covered everything on the basic layout of the course, text materials, lab, speaking assignments. Um, I will put the groups together after this. Anybody have specific questions? Ah, here we go. Uh, for the homework, will that be lecture notes we have to upload or is it something else? So there's a couple of homework. The category for homework. Yep, uh, lecture notes that you have to upload, that's a main part of it. So those are gonna work this way. You saw the first assignment of those and I asked you to take the PowerPoints, to print them out, to annotate the PowerPoints while you're watching the video and to take photographs of them or scan them, put them in a Word file and upload them to Canvas. So you'll be doing something like that every week for the lectures. We will transition to having you take real notes pretty quickly. So the real notes, meaning I'm not asking you just to annotate the PowerPoints, but to actually have a blank piece of paper and to write out notes for this. The um, IQ assignments are also homework as well, correct? Yes. Let me say a word about the grading for the um, homework. <clears throat> well, this is going to apply to both IQ and to the lecture notes. So we do a lot of what I would call mastery grading in the class. Mastery grading works like this. We set a criterion and you meet that criterion, you get full credit. You don't meet that criterion, you get zero credit. You can do the assignment over and over again until you get full credit. That's how mastery typically works. And the IQ assignments are all gonna work that way. The lecture notes don't work exactly that way because you can't redo them. But we will make, try to um, make them easier at the beginning and make them harder as you get more used to taking the notes so that you get, always are getting, we hope, full credit for them and you're getting better and better at taking notes. In the lecture notes, we may give half credit sometimes and say, you get half credit for this and here's what I wanted to see to make this so you get full credit next time. I do expect good notes and I'll be posting examples of what I expect as we get on in this um, for this. So that's, so, if you have oh, notes in class, you will learn it in this class. And I'm, I think that's a very valuable skill. Ms. Rushforth. 
Um, a couple more uh, questions. Uh, the next one in line, let's see, is lab, uh, is there a general dress code for lab? Um, we are not going to be working with glassware, acids, or any heavy chemicals. Um, so just dress, you know, like you would for any other lab. Um, close toed shoes are recommended but not required. Um, you know, don't dress in your fanciest stuff. Uh, but again, it's plants. Um, the do, one thing we will have in lab, which most other labs do not have, is we will have some uh, safety glasses for you to wear while you're looking through the microscope, so you're not like blinking other people's eye goo or anything like that. Um, so that is one area, and we will have gloves available, and of course wear masks. So um, we do have all the protective equipment that you will need, except for masks. Wear your own masks. Um, we will have some extras, but that's only if you really, really forgot. Um, so that's the lab dress code. The next question is about the homework again. Um, is it okay if it's digital, uploaded, and not handwritten? And I think that that is fine and actually probably preferred. Like if they write on their iPad, make notes that way, Bruce? Um, I much prefer if they're writing the notes by hand. Now the notes could be written by hand on an iPad, on a blank mm -hmm. iPad and uploaded. But there's actually been research on this, and they, people have shown that you retain the material better if you write it out by hand than if you type it. So I would rather you didn't type your notes, but that you wrote them out by hand. I don't care if you write them on an iPad or any kind of computer that allow you to do that, or you write them on paper and upload them. That's fine. Um, Natalie asks if... Um we should only use the assignments tab or should we also be checking under the homework tab and files? Everything that we want from you, we will post in assignments. I'm sorry, I've got a garbage truck driving by right now. Oh, we didn't hear it. I didn't hear it. Oh, he turned it off. Okay, sorry, I muted it. It was really loud. Um, that's correct, right? All of our assignments will be under the assignments tab. And then um, Casey says, I've already started taking notes on my reading. Should I also upload them with my lecture notes? So do you want reading notes too? I don't need the reading notes, no. That's great that you're doing that. It's really a good idea to take notes on the reading or to go through the book. Let's say you print those out and highlight the important parts of the book. And we'll be talking later on what you're gonna do with these notes. So you're gonna be using these notes in your studying mm -hmm. and we'll talk as we get into the course a little more um, about effective methods of studying. Um, feel free to unmute yourself if you have any questions you don't want to type out. I have a question about um, the organization for the readings we're supposed to do. I'm just confused about what readings go with what week because it's all in one list and I can't really tell where the cutoff is for every week. Yes, I went around several times trying to figure out how to make that clear. So these readings are listed in chronological order for how we're going through the semester. So <clears throat> when you look at the title up here, so this is going to say the introduction and chlorophyta for this week. So if you go down here, the first ones up through chlorophyta is basically for this week. And then you look up here for next week, it's going to say chlorophyce, and you look down here, there's a section on chlorophyce. So you just correlate them across with the, um, with the main part of the syllabus. But you can also look, sorry, you can also look in your lab manual and it will have all of the organisms that we're covering in that lab. And then you can also check, you know, if there's something that, that is in the lab manual that you didn't yet read in Raven, you can then hop over and read it out of Raven. Other questions? Okay, we are at the official end of lecture time. I'm surprised we spent that much time talking about the class, but it's a new format for all of us. We will um, we put the video up probably on the YouTube channel, but I'll link to it someplace in, um, in Canvas. So you have that, but you can look at the YouTube channel for it also if you want to review anything. The YouTube videos I wanted to tell you 
let's just, oh, I've got to change my share here. Um, I'll show you this real quickly here as we end. To find my, not sure this is it. Can you see the um, sign up sheet again on your screen? Yes, we see the sign up sheet again. So we just want to go to one of, oops, one of the videos, except not that one. That one, you can see that one yet. I can see that one. Here's one that you can see. And I'm not going to play it. I look down in the comments section, and there is an index in the comments section. And if you click on any of these, um, numbers, it'll jump you to that part of the video. So once you've watched the video and taken notes on it and you want to come back and review some specific aspect, you have a question, you just come here and you look for in the index and you can jump to that part of the video. So that's, that'll be true of all the videos when they're published. The ones that aren't published yet, I still have to create the index for. But within, within two weeks, maybe within, by the end of this week, those will all be there. Bruce, can you clarify, these are on YouTube and they're also on Canvas? It's just easier to find one group on YouTube, correct? Only on YouTube. The, oh, they're only on YouTube. They will be linked, when we give assignments, they will be linked in Canvas. So I'm gonna, Okay. my intention is to embed them in Canvas. I was trying to embed a video this morning and it didn't work. They removed yeah. the link to Vidim. So, but my intention is to have them embedded in Canvas like in the first assignment. So you don't have to come to this YouTube site, but if you've bookmarked it or subscribed to it, you can always get here for review. Easy okay. to find I, things here. I think that answers John's question. Okay. All right, anybody else? Last chance, well, I'll see you Thursday, so you can ask me then too, if you come up with more questions between now and then. Okay, there's gonna be two short videos to watch for Thursday. We will get those up as quick as we can here, we hope in the next half an hour or so. Yep. All right, bye well, everybody. Have you here, um, April and Ms. Rushforth and I are gonna stay on here to work out some of those problems we talked about. So you guys can take care. We'll see you on Thursday or Ms. Rushforth will. Are they meeting Thursday morning? No. No, nope. They're just showing up to lab. Nope. That's the next thing. See you in lab, see you on lab, bye. Dropping like fly. <laughs> no, I'm sorry.